This episode of Grip Tips has been brought to you by M Squared Studio, and if you'd like to help out the channel, you can visit my Patreon page. I'll leave a link in the description below. We're back. We're back. I'm Dave Donaldson. Welcome back to Grip Tips. Today we're going to take a look at one of my favorite lights that I've used on almost 90% of the productions that I've been on. It comes from the company K5600. It's the Joker Bug 800 Watt. So there's four different types of lights that are out there. There's tungsten, fluorescent, LED, and HMI. Uh, today we're going to be talking about the HMI as the Joker Bug 800 is an HMI lamp. What exactly is an HMI? HMI stands for hydrogen... 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 Hydrary, hang on. Hydrogerum. That word, medium arc iodide. Hydrogerum, medium arc iodide. So what does that mean in layman's terms? Well, basically you have the globe that's actually inside of the lamp. Uh, that globe has two electrodes and in between those two electrodes is a gas. When an arc is formed between the two electrodes, the gas inside of that chamber gets excited and boom, light. HMIs also have a color temperature of 5600 degrees Kelvin, daylight. They're also more efficient. This Joker 800 only uses 10 and a half amps of power, but is as bright as a 4K tungsten. Jokers come in a strong, durable case like this and weigh around 35 pounds when it's full. When we first look inside, we get all of the goodies. Starting off, we have a 25 foot extension for the head unit. Then we also have these barn doors, the ballast, and then the head unit itself has a nine foot cable already attached. And this head will actually fit onto any 5 8 baby pin. After you've mounted your light, you can slap on the barn doors just like all other fixtures that are like this, sliding the barn doors into the front slot of the light and opening them up. Then drop the head cable out of its coil and attach it to the 25 foot extension that we pulled out earlier. There's only one way that this can attach to the other cable. You'll notice a slot where the other cable plugs into and if it doesn't plug into each other, then either you have the wrong side or you don't have the cable lined up correctly. If that's kind of confusing, just give me a second because we're going to revisit that in a different angle. Then you'll spin the connector lock until it snaps into place. And I'm doing it a couple of times here so that you can see it snap into position. And now for the other side that plugs into the ballast, which works very similar to what we just did. When looking closely at these connectors, you'll see this notch at the top of the female end. On the male end of things, there's a slot for the notch to line up with. And that's why I say that this can only go on one way. These two have to line up in order to get a good connection with each other. Then the twist lock on the male end will do the rest of the work for you. As you twist, the cable will pull in more and click into place. And I'm just gonna let the audio from my camera play for a second so that you can hear it snap into place. And something else that you might've noticed is that the yellow dot from the actual extension cable and the ballast both line up when you snap it into place. Now it's just a matter of plugging the ballast into a wall or a stinger. And once you've done that, an indicator light will turn on, letting you know that the ballast is ready to fire. And all you have to do to turn the light on is hit the red button on the ballast. Now, as soon as you hit the red button on the ballast, don't expect like this big beaming light to come shining out of the head. Uh, HMIs take a while to warm up. So um, remember, there's two electrodes that are exciting a gas in the middle. So it's gonna take a while for this thing to get up to temp. Just Take a minute, I'm playing this footage back in real time so that you can see exactly how long does it take the Joker Bug 800 to get there. Uh, just be patient and then by the time it gets there, uh, you can start making your tweaks. Another thing that you find with HMIs is that they come with an assortment of lenses. You can find Joker lenses in the top of the case that it came in. This is where you're gonna find a medium lens, a wide lens, a super wide lens, also known as a stipple. And this rental kit didn't come with one, but you typically also get a frosted Fresnel lens. Uh, you also have a gaggle of scrims as well. Inserting a lens is similar to inserting a scrim. Open the top latch of the Joker and you'll place the lens closest to the light in the allotted slot. Scrims can also be added in front of them for more modifying of the light. Just so that you can see what these lenses do, I stop my camera down. Here I have a medium lens inserted, which gives kind of a narrow beam rectangle shape on the duvetine. And the lens can be spun in any direction so that you can modify the angle of the beam depending on what you're looking for. Next up, we have the wide lens, which is slightly the same as the medium, but a thicker rectangle kind of shape for more spread. Then you have the super wide stipple lens, which gives you more of a box shape than a rectangle to your beam, softening and spreading out the light even more. And last but not least, you have the Fresnel lens, which this kit did not come with, but it basically gives you an even softer and wider spread. So you have medium, wide, super wide, AKA stipple, and uh, frosted Fresnel. Kind of in that order as far as how much spread you want. Now let's talk about how to pack the Joker 800 because you can get lost really, really quick. First and foremost, I will say this about HMI lights, they get stupid hot, really, really hot. So if you're striking 
uh, a set one day, just turn off the HMIs first and maybe work on something else and give the light a little time to cool down. Um, the inside of this case has kind of like a fireproof safety blanket kind of material, uh, but if you look inside of the box, you can even tell that this has been melted from past productions because this light is stupid hot when you first shut it off. So just give that a little time, shut it off, maybe go wrap a couple of tungstens or LEDs or fluorescents, anything else with the HMI because that's going to need a few minutes to kind of cool down. But moving on, the lenses go back into the top part of the case and get shut inside and latched close. Pay close attention to the sides of the flap that close as the part that holds the flap can sometimes get pinched and make it kind of a pain to try and close everything up. So make sure to tuck that in and relatch it shut. Now let's move to the inside of the case. Take the baby pin side of the joker and make sure that it's pointed down toward the back and inside of the left corner. This helps make space for other things, like a speed ring, for example. And yes, for you veterans out there, I know this is the wrong speed ring, I'm just using it as an example. With the 25 foot extension, you can loop it around the joker bug head and set it down. Barn doors can be placed with the doors facing the divider wall and then wedge the ballast between the barn doors and the divider wall. Wrap up the cables nice and neat and set that in as I have not done here, and close the lid. Last but not least, close the latch and lock it up. When it comes to your Genie, Rental House needs M Squared Studios, not only that, but they're also an insert stage located in Parsippany, New Jersey. Within the Manhattan zone in just 30 minutes from Midtown, the studio offers discounted or free delivery rates for your production. In fact, if you mention Grip Tips in the next six months when you're getting a quote from them, they'll take 20% off of your order. That's right, all you gotta do is mention Grip Tips. Uh, so definitely take advantage of that. If you need a quote, or maybe you just wanna see what the company is all about, you can head on over to their website at www.msquaredstudio.tv. Or if you wanna check out their Instagram page, I'll also leave that link in the description below. But sadly, that is all that I have for you guys today. If you liked today's episode, please let me know in the comment section below. You can also follow me on my Twitter right here. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. We'll see you next time right here on Grip Tips.